Hello, my crafty friends, and thank you so much for joining me today in the flip through of this chunky, 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 and just full of surprises, little junk journal that I've made. Um, I spent a couple of weeks on this little beauty, and I think she is plump and just brimming with goodness. I hope you agree. I mean, on one thing we can all agree, she is definitely plump. Um, there is a little baggie on the inside front cover that I'll show you if it's removed. A lot of that um, plumpness can be reduced, but I think one thing we all kind of love around here is a full junk journal, right? Like the more stuff that's in it, the better. At least that's how I approached this maximalist of a mini. So I call this journal The Heart of Bohemia. And it's inspired by the legend, the lore, and in my opinion, and of course, people disagree. Some people believe in crystal healing. Some people maybe don't feel the energy, and so they don't believe that others do feel the energy. Some people are very skeptical like that. Um, but I'm one of those people who's had really cool crystal experiences, so I definitely believe in the power of crystal vibrations to affect our moods, to uplift us, to energize us, to empower specific chakras. And anyway, the heart chakra happens to be energized especially by green colored crystals and gemstones. And one of the most powerful substances I've ever come across that I would call my absolute favorite of all time crystals is Moldavite. You can see a piece of it in the center of this removable brooch right here. And Moldavite comes from only one place in the world, and that's the Meldau River area in the Czech Republic um, and the Bohemian kind of plateau area. So the heart of Bohemia. So I've called the journal the heart of Bohemia and it's based on literally a heart chakra energizing and empowering and really revitalizing crystal substance or tectite substance found in the Bohemia area of the world. The cover is full of surprises, so the first surprise is that this beautiful brooch is removable, so you can take it off and wear it. Um, the other crystals on it are natural stones as well, so we have Moldavite in the center. Around that we have a stone called Chrome Diopside that's a very, very deep, almost like an emerald green, very powerful stone. And then Peridot around the outside edges. So I'll put... I'll put the names of those crystals in the video description in case you'd like to Google them and see what the stones are about in case that might sway your decision if you're thinking about picking up this journal because it will be available for sale in my Etsy shop. But anyway, yeah, that little skirt flips up so you can see the fabric beneath. And then the other surprise is that this really cool piece of vintage fabric also flips up to reveal our stunning mystical woman. So the heart of Bohemia, we can see it as Moldavite, as a sacred substance that stimulates the heart chakra and helps us awaken to our spiritual capacity. Or we can see it as the life force within Divine Feminine. So I see this woman in this beautiful old painting as being something of a mystic. So this book is filled with things that she might collect along her journeys. The closure is a Thai closure that I made out of a vintage scarf that I found thrifting. It has such a cool pattern on it and it kind of reminded me of the types of scarves she might wear. So anyhow, opening the front cover you can see I made this one a little bit more fun and playful. Why don't I, oops, try not to get ahead here. Zoom in just a little bit there, is that better? I hope that's better. <laughs> you could be saying yes or you could be saying no and I won't hear you because I'm in the past <laughs> filming this. 
Anyway, I love this little thing. So the pocket on the front inside cover is made out of a really cool, sturdy piece of burlap that's embroidered with this really vibrant colored yarn. And I found this at a local antique shop and it's a really cool vintage piece, I think from the 1960s. It might even be older than that, but no later than the 60s. And then the fun pom-pom trim on the side. I think this was from Kimberly. Thank you again, Kimberly. So anyway, I love this little piece here. This is a drawstring pouch that I made. If you're a regular viewer of mine, you might recognize this fabric. It's like a heavy embroidered corduroy that came out of my grandmom's stash. And I actually sewed this little drawstring pouch all by myself. I'm very proud. <laughs> you can see a little bit of glitching went on with the sewing machine there, but I promise it's sturdy. So anyway, inside this little pouch, I'm not gonna take them all out because they can be a little bit uh, likely to fly all over the place but I stuffed it with, I'll pull some out to show you, a complete deck of 78 miniature tarot cards. Aren't these the coolest little things? I've printed these and I've used them in other journals in the past, but I find it exciting every time I use them just because they're the cutest and they're also fully functional. So you can give a complete, maybe we better do that, right? I wasn't going to pull them all out, but now that I think of it, you can't give you can't give an accurate tarot reading if you're not using a full deck, can you? I don't think so. Anyway, so there you go. That's how the pouch looks when it's empty. And then here's all 78 of the little tiny cards. So let's see. I'm just going to ask the cards to reveal to us a message, something universal, something that's going to be applicable. There we go. Something that's going to be applicable to everyone who tunes into this message today. That one. Ooh, cool cards. I already see one of my absolute favorite, favorite cards. And yes, you're allowed to pick favorites. <laughs> the Ace of Cups. So I picked the Ace of Cups because you may have seen that it kind of flew out of the deck as I was shuffling. Whenever a card flies out of the deck, it means it has a very strong message. Now what you see in this card is a hand coming out of the sky and it's holding a chalice out of which four springs are flowing. And those four springs represent the four cardinal directions. Anywhere you go at this point is going to be blessed. The ace cards always represent times of beginning, times of refreshment and renewal. So you could be entering into a new relationship, a new friendship, or you could be revitalizing and renewing one that's already existed that was kind of in need of some revamping. So at this point, any idea that you have to do something new is going to be blessed, like that hand of providence coming out of the sky. This is one of the major arcana cards, the card of strength, and in it you see a woman crowned by the symbol of infinity. So that means her strength doesn't come from physical brute force. Her strength comes from the knowledge of infinity, the awareness that she existed before her birth will exist beyond her death, that she's not just her mortal physical self, but she is the energy and the awareness beyond that mortal coil. And with that intelligence, with that awareness of infinity, comes the ability to put her hand into the mouth of the lion with the complete trust that he's not going to bite it off. We also see the Knight of Swords. So I'm kind of laughing because when we see the Ace of Cups, it shows that you can relax and have faith. It's a water element card. You can trust that the currents of life are bringing to you the renewal that you're going to need. 
But when we see a card of the night energy, it shows you charging forward into a new situation, specifically a situation that involves intellect. So maybe this is a debate, maybe this is a confrontation with somebody and you've been meaning to tell them off, but you just haven't really had the right words for it yet. And then suddenly you get them and it's like charging into battle. Because what we see in the card of the Knight of Swords, we see a young warrior charging into battle. So you might have a situation in your life that requires a little bit of confrontation. You can trust yourself. All of these cards were right side up. The fact that you're working from a place of strength on the inner space spectrum means that you're not charging into something guns blazing for no good reason. You have a genuine reason to want to charge into a confrontation. You have strength and wisdom on your side, and you can also trust the hand of the universe to guide you and to, yeah, to make sure that you have whatever you need when you need it. The Ace of Cups especially comes up when somebody's having a new romantic beginning, so could be a summer romance for some people watching this. Anyway, that little baggie of tarot cards, I imagine it to be something that this woman here would really treasure. So yeah, that's why that sits in the very front. But you see what I mean? If you take this out, it doesn't need to live inside the journal. For example, you could attach it to one of the paper clips and have it dangle out the edge. And that would be, you know, still a way to keep it with the piece of art it was made for. But taking some of the bulk out of the pages... This is a print I made of a piece of Victorian ephemera. This is actually in a printable kit that I have called, um, I think it's called Victorian Treasures. And you can see she's holding a bluebird of happiness. So I inked the edges of the back, but left it otherwise blank. And that way you get some journaling space. And yeah, this is a page out of a kid's, a kid's book. But I thought the illustrated background looks just like kind of the stone doorway that could be there in this woman's Roman architecture house. Isn't this fun? This was in some happy mail from May. <clears throat> she sent a few of a length of these and I just love that mirrored sort of jeweled look Indian trim. Little charm. This is a reproduction I made also in that same Victorian scrapbook printables. It's a reproduction of a calling card where a hand is holding out roses and doves, which is an extension like a peace offering or an extension of love. Maybe I'll let that kind of hang out. I also put in this pocket an old book page. So this journal would be especially good for someone who loves crafting and who loves junk journaling or like me just loves the texture and variety of all kinds of different old papers. Love the illustrations on this side here. So yeah, this pocket page is from an old book about how to use a typewriter. This is a vintage envelope that I've actually folded in half and sewn right into the signature. And inside it, there's a little miniature book with a mermaid on the cover. And this can actually be folded open to see the whole little scene. So yeah, inside I've put a mixture of little pages, some from an old, Russian to English dictionary, and then some just from pretty old music books. Oops. Didn't mean to be totally out of camera there. It's hard. I'm used to looking at my hands, not at the phone screen. But yeah, super cute. And then on the page right next to the mermaid page, of course, I had to put some sea creatures to keep her company in here. So we have whales and dolphins. And this page 
with the beads is just a page that I folded over this old accounting ledger page. So yeah, it's just a page out of an old art history textbook. There's a little snippet of a Minoan interior. Very cool piece from the ancient world. I glued down a little bit of graph paper here just so you can journal over this and put some stickers with whales and dolphins. Isn't that cool? And then to keep with the sea creature theme on the back of this fold over, why I chose this page is the cool old octopus vase from the Isle of Crete. Some more ancient Grecian art. Isn't that cool looking? I just love looking at ancient art styles and seeing just the way they depicted the natural world. So yeah, the inside of this, you could use this as a base for a collage if you want to use this journal kind of like a glue book. I love this little cluster. And then all the numbers are written in the 1960s. This was an actual account accountant book. And then on the other side here, I folded the page up to be kind of like a pocket and put into it the front page from a really cool book about world history that I had bought to use in a previous project. And no, I'm not buying expensive books and using them in my journals. I mean, thrifted. <laughs> but yeah, I love that little fold over piece. This page is from the Age of Enlightenment printable kit by, let's see, Tailor Made Journals. And then on the other side, there's a page from the Moon Gazers kit by Leanna Scrap. This pocket, made out of some old stamps, just holds some wine bottle labels some vintage wine bottle labels. I gave quite a few because it's such a beautiful image to use of the goddess Diana after bathing in the sea with one of her attendants. Notice how she's crowned with the crescent moon. Really pretty. Those look great in collages. So this page is made up of little pieces that are each on their own a tuck spot. So all these little stamps still have a little bit of cardstock from envelopes or postcards or whatever they used to be on and I thought it would be cute to use them as tuck spots to tuck little bits of ephemera. So we have a beautiful little work of art that was gifted to me by Cat Stone tucked in here and another little bluebird of happiness. Maybe with the little red chest, that's more of a robin of happiness, but either way. And then just an example of one that I tucked in that I didn't want to glue down because that snippet of architecture is too pretty to lose, isn't it? With that blue sky. And I love this. This phoenix was also in a happy mail from Cat Stone. Thank you, Cat. I just love this. You can see the colors on the back of that fabric. This is some coffee dyed paper made in Saudi Arabia by the talented May. Paper from the counting book. I used that as a fold over pocket to hold this cool old postcard. Isn't that gorgeous? And on the back, the traveler wrote about the volcano that we see in the picture. And then I made a little tuck spot with a picture of Mahalakshmi. She's the goddess of wealth and generosity. See how her hands are open and there's a stream of coins, of golden coins flowing from her. The idea is that if we remain constantly in the flow of generosity, always giving whatever we can, the universe will make sure that we are always replenished, that we always have whatever we need. So yeah, her hand is open. She's giving that benediction. And because she's the goddess of wealth of all the pages, I chose to put her on the book about accounting. 
So this is a copy of a Victorian calling card from that same book, or sorry, that same printable collection, the Victorian treasures. I love this one because she's wearing a snake bracelet. And I recently found this super cool treasure thrifting with that snake with that faux green stone. But yeah, to the Victorians, snakes and snake jewelry represented love and affection. So if you ever see snake jewelry, don't be put off by it. And my artist friend Kat, from whom that previous little print came, collects snake jewelry and I think it's the coolest thing. Anyway, I thought of her when I saw this one, but the clasp is really tricky. And with arthritis, it can be difficult for some people, I think. Would be rude to send a bracelet with a clasp that's too hard to do, don't you think? Anyway, Kat, if you're watching this, I did totally think of you when I saw that little gem. So this page here is a printable from my Arabian Nights Magic Carpet digital kit. And so is the background paper here. That's actually a print that I created using a picture of a really, really old actual Persian carpet. And I just kind of muted it down a little bit to make it like a paper background. This beautiful print. Speaking of cat stone, here's a stunning and somber picture she created, but so beautiful, so mythical. I wanted this book to have a lot of things in it that look like they could be from a faraway land and saved and collected and put together for the sake of remembering, you know, in the interesting travels and the cool life lessons. And on the back of this, she wrote Artemis, Unrequited Love. So it does have that somber feeling to it, but so stunningly beautiful. And I love this blue trim from India. This flips up. Lots of journaling space. Old characters on this antique page. This birdie is actually just taped in with a little ball of washi tape so you can move him around if you want to. Another page from my Magic Carpet Digi Kit and that side too. This cool card from India is also washi taped in, so you can easily just take it off. And it's double-sided, which is super cool. That was also a gift from Kat. I love, love, love the peacocks on this. I wanted this book to be very textile rich too and to look like it's bursting with cool fabrics from the side. So you'll see lots of these sari trim tabs. And this one always gave me an Egyptian vibe. So I fussy cut around the edges of this kind of lotus, um, almost looks like a lotus bulb and made it into a tuck spot. And into that tuck spot, I put a length of genuine Egyptian papyrus. And this was actually made in Egypt and purchased in Egypt by my grandparents years and years ago when they were there. Cool print of the Buddha. This was printed on my printer after the out of colored ink light was flashing. That's why it has a pink tone, but I thought it was still pretty cool. So I set it aside for just the right project. And this felt like just the right project. On the other side, there's this really cool image. This comes out of the Boho Bohemian Bazaar printable kit by, let's see, Medieval Mirage. That little French book page just has a little bit of extra graph paper folded over onto it for a little bit of extra journaling space. This is out of a 1912 French architect's manual. So all kinds of numbers and equations. Little girl with kittens. This is also in my printable kit, the Victorian Treasures printable kit 
in my Etsy shop, which I'll link in the description. But yeah, this is out of a vintage ledger book. And I just love different types of paper, different graph prints. So seeing these cool, um, almost brick shape spaces in this graph paper and then this totally other one on the other side, it's just so cool. So I tucked that behind the little girl. This is coffee dyed tracing paper. And I love how crinkly it feels. This is a piece of vintage wallpaper made into a tuck spot. And into that, I tucked something that I think is really, really cool. So you can see I really inked up the back of this print to make it look super old and to give you, oops, so four different sort of contained spaces for journaling. And if you're like me, the appeal of junk journals is that you don't have to be intimidated by a big, huge blank page in a typical journal. You can open it up and find like this little square to write something in. And so anyway, all of the ephemera pages, I tried to include space for journaling, like the back of this wallpaper or like this little area here in the Liana scrap printable. But anyway, on the other side of that great journaling space that for some reason I feel like I'm trying to sell you on, <laughs> I put a print from one of the coolest books in my personal collection. It's a book from the late Edo period from Japan and I bought it as an antique encyclopedia. All the pages in it were woodblock printed onto rice paper. So it's not like a leather bound Western encyclopedia like you might have from your grandparents like I do. Um, this encyclopedia, it's stitch bound in the traditional Japanese stitch binding style. And instead of having passages about all the different places in the world, I can tell just from the illustrations throughout the book that it's based on, or it's it's basically teaching about the more mystical, mythological Japanese traditions. So this is one of my favorite pages inside that late Edo period, which kind of coincides with the late Victorian era. So we're talking like the late 1800s. Um, mid to late 1800s, so maybe around 1870s. Um, but yeah, this Japanese page is, is pretty much my favorite page in that book because it shows palmistry diagrams and also moon phases with really cool writing that kind of goes into like a mandala of cool charting, like circular graphs. It just looks so cool and so graphic. So yeah, lots of journaling space, but also I think a really cool information page. If anyone watching this reads Japanese, I would love to know what these pages all say. Come visit me and read my book and <laughs> translate it. <laughs> no, I would never do that. But maybe if, so if somebody does speak Japanese out there, um... I could take some photos of the coolest pages and email them to you if you wouldn't mind doing a little bit of translation. I think that would be super cool. Or maybe just leave a comment if there's anything super fascinating in these lunar charts or palmistry charts. But yeah, I was assuming the heart of Bohemia here our lovely mystical lady with her tarot cards and her Moldavite vintage jewelry pieces. Um, I'm assuming she would have friends who are into all kinds of different mystical arts. Like every tarot reader has encountered a palm reader along their journeys. I know I have a few. <laughs> and I'm assuming she, and she picked this up as a copy maybe out of the magical book of yeah, a Japanese palmist or astrologer who she encountered. But anyway, that sits in this folded over wallpaper pocket page adjacent to this page out of the Liana scrap kit that shows cool astrology symbols on what look like tarot cards. 
So it felt like just the perfect fit for that page into this page. This is another page out of that Age of Enlightenment kit. Super cool looking. These were in Happy Mail from Cat Stone. She sent quite a few like in a piece of embroidery and I just love how happy and bright and shiny they look. I think a lot of the time when we think of bohemian culture and the gypsy romantic lifestyle, being a traveler, being someone who has a caravan and you pick up and go and you're all artists and you're all musicians and everyone around you is into, you know, mystical stuff. When, when at least for me, that's what the bohemian lifestyle represents. When we visualize it, a lot of the time, the images that come to mind, I would imagine, <laughs> no pun intended, but the images that come up are typically dark, like dark crushed velvets for the fabrics and the dark interiors of caravans and, you know, dark clothing and maybe some sometimes some dirt because you're living outside and when I've actually seen people, like when I saw Romani people with my own two eyes in Slovakia while visiting a friend there, right in the heart of Bohemia in Slovakia, um, I was taken aback by the bright floral prints that a lot of the women wore. So I included these flowers as an homage to, yeah, the light, bright, airy spirit of people who take whichever flowers happen to be blossoming up in the landscape that suit their bouquet and make their life into, yeah, like a collage of all the cool stuff they encounter. That's what this book is meant to be, like a collage of all the cool stuff I encounter in my journal making, you know, career and the stuff that, you know, stuff that's gifted, stuff that I've gone out of my way to acquire stuff that are out of my printable kits, but just, yeah, fun collection of stuff. So anyway, these embroidered flowers, they're just so pretty and they remind me of the light, breezy springtime florals that inspire us to be outside. And they just flip down so you still have this full page coffee dyed paper that I made for journaling. This is a Sears wallpaper sample from 1928, the genuine real piece. So you can read the info on the back. Back then it was 17 cents a roll. More of that coffee dyed tracing paper. Some trim making up a little tab that I've used as a pocket to hold some pages from two pages from a French grammar book. French grammar was one of the banes of my childhood existence. I hated grammar. As a French immersion student, grammar seemed like the most complicated mathematics taught by teachers who could never explain it in such a way that it made sense to me. How do you like that? <laughs> Instead of putting it on the kids to understand it, put it on the teachers. You, you didn't teach it right, otherwise I would have understood it. A light balloon. <laughs> I love that antique book just to put pages into journals like this just because it sounds like such a cool name for a junk journal. A light balloon. And of course, coffee dyed paper, lots of journaling space there and here. And if you're wondering why I tucked all these old book pages into this journal, it's because if somebody buys this who likes to do collaging, they are a treasure trove of collageable material. So just rip little pieces of them up, um, glue them down, make little clusters. It always looks super cool. Um, and if you're not into collaging like that, you can just recycle them. <laughs> no harm done. Use the tuck spots to tuck your stuff. It's your journal if you buy it. Anyway, this page came out of an old school atlas that my Auntie Mary Lynn found for me. Really cool. Thank you again, Mary Lynn. She found me a couple of these from the 1950s. 
I love how somebody is doing math here. Speaking of school and classrooms and teachers. But anyway, I included this piece here because we see the Czech Republic and Slovakia or Czech Czechoslovakia. Um, so yeah, this is where Moldavite comes from. Moldavite like the heart of Bohemia gem. I love this image of Ishtar. The name, the ancient Near East. Then a cool old Lion Gate. So here we go. This is where the center is stitched. And I did something different, as you can see here, for the dangles of this one. I was thinking, what would a fun, what would a fun wandering tarot reader kind of a lady collect? And I figured, obviously, coins from ancient lands. So these are cool I Ching coins that have dragons on one side, perfect for the year of the dragon, and symbols on the other. And then this is a pressed glass bead, black and light green, and just a couple of gold painted beads to kind of cap it off. A page of seashells from a vintage seashell book. The other side of that art history textbook. This is a perfectly wearable pendant of lapis lazuli with a gold plated star. I just put it on a paper clip, clipped in a cool chart of seashells because who wouldn't save a chart of seashells if it came into your possession? And yeah, clipped in some jewelry which is something I do with my own personal junk journals. I'll save my favorite pieces of jewelry. Here's the other side of that Sears wallpaper sample. And you can see why I chose it for this book. Look at how beautiful that little cluster, that little bouquet of flowers looks with this pink blended into blue fabric flip. Again, lots of journaling space. Thank you, Kat, for such a beautiful care package. She sent me the most beautiful materials. This was also in it. And I felt like the pink and blue in this flower perfectly match, at least in, in blending, the pink and blue of this little fabric swatch. On the other side of that paper, coffee dyed paper, I put yet another French book page and a page out of an old Dutch book that I found thrifting. And I just folded it up the way old French letters are typically folded, just to create something interesting. But yeah, it has a couple of really cool illustrations. Look at that ship, or those ships, plural. I just love illustrations in vintage books. So yeah, I just folded that over and that over and this part and this part and then you just tuck one end into the other yeah and you get something like an old antique letter didn't know you'd be getting a tutorial when you clicked on this one did you <laughs> i had something else i'm going to do something very rude i'm going to show you my cat butts and I'm going to walk away for a second to find something to put in that little pocket because I don't like to send something out empty. Here we go. I found a gorgeous print of Circe casting a beautiful magical spell. Look at her holding that magic wand in front of the cauldron. The other side is this cool piece of an astrological wheel. Goes so well with that Leanna scrap page. There we go. So of course, whoever buys this book can use the pockets however she or he pleases. But yeah, when I send something, you can be sure there's something in every little tuck spot. I love this koi fish. This was on a piece of cardstock Kat sent me. And I just fussy cut around weaving a black border. And I think it looks so cool and alive coming out of, out of the kind of muddy waters here into 
the Lotus Garden. That is this wallpaper. <laughs> That's just um, washi taped in as well, so you can easily peel it off and move it or use it. Lots of plain book pages on the second half of this book. So yeah, after you pass the middle area, I left a lot of the pages blank just so whoever gets it gets lots of journaling space. Old stamps with cool old buildings and landscapes. Another Buddha image. I love this dangling vintage blue trim. Another cool old stamp. This one I thought was super cool because it has a dragon statue in the center. Isn't that gorgeous, that dragon right there? So I figured that works well for a journal made in the year of the dragon. I made sure I had two of those so the other one can go in my dragon themed journal. I took a page out of the music book and just folded it and folded it over this coffee dyed paper just as a way of getting it in here. That beautiful scene. This is the other side of that page out of my magic carpet printable kit. I love that street scene. Doesn't that look so lively with the blankets hung across the walking path? The cool architecture in the background. These old papers are from around the 1950s. They come from Victoria, BC. They, they could be even earlier than that, back when phone numbers only had four digits. <laughs> but they're old bridge scorecards that I found at an antique shop here in Alberta, in a town called Fort McLeod, birthplace of Joni Mitchell. Speaking of Cat Stone, I was about to say she's her favorite. And this is more little cool fabric from Cat. So I hope this book captured sort of a mystical vibe like I was going for. If you notice those long dangling things hanging out the bottom, that's from this fabric flip onto this other piece of this 1960s ledger and it folds open to reveal some samples of some of my favorite favorite Indian sari trims. Look at the vibrancy of this purple and pink embroidery and then this one just looks super cool. So this page in this pocket is out of another Japanese Edo period book from the Victorian era, or the late Edo period. It's the full page, so meaning both sides of a signature. You see where the holes were punched in for the traditional thread binding. But this was out of a pilgrimage book to Kuan Yin temples. So I like to think some of the blessings of the Bodhisattva of compassion remain in that sacred piece of paper. And that's an original, that's rice paper from yeah, more than 150 years ago. And then these are samples of wallpaper out of a modern wallpaper sample book. But I just love the color and texture. You can use the backs for journaling or add them to a collage to get that cool pearlescent sheen. The other side of that envelope. And of course, I had to stick something in here too. So in here you get a tea card, genuine from the late 1800s. That's out of a Victorian scrapbook. Isn't that beautiful with those parrots? And of course, whoever gets this book can put whatever they want into this envelope. And it also looks really cool to use that space for journaling. More music paper. This folds open, so great backdrops for collaging. You can also just paint those white, gesso them and use it as writing space. Oh, and here we go. 
I was prepared for this. <laughs> Another empty pocket ready to be filled. So a more modern tea card with these pretty purple blossoms. Sweet Violet. Sweet Violet, that's the name of my mom's china pattern. Anyway, <laughs> we're nearly at the end. When we come to the trumpeter, more pretty sari trim. Cute little girl. And then in the very back page, I added yet another type of graph paper just because I think they're all so cool in their different ways. And this slate board, so this is kind of funny. This is um, a sample that I found at Rona when we were there looking at new bathroom stuff. And this can be used as a book board. So for example, say you want to write something on this page here, but you've got lots of bumpy stuff glued into your book. You can just put this book board behind where you want to write and it gives you a completely solid background for writing. And it also kind of makes it feel like the back cover of this book is a hard cover. So it gives a little bit of sturdiness and structure to the book. But anyway, that is it, The Heart of Bohemia. I hope you loved looking at this book as much as I've loved making it. The ring with purchase this time is something that I think is really super special because I made it myself and it's been made to, I'll just let this fall open wherever it wants to, how about there? It's made with a big pile of peridot crystals, genuine little peridot chips. And at the very top of that mound of peridot, I've set in um, jeweler's epoxy, so really, really strong glue, a piece of genuine moldavite. So this ring not only looks beautiful, but it would radiate exactly the kind of mystical powers you'd expect a tarot reader like the woman we see here to possess. And you get kind of a matched set of jewelry because you get this wearable brooch with peridot and moldavite, as well as this ring with peridot and moldavite. So yeah, that comes with the book. I think it's the coolest jewelry I've given with the journal so far. Um, when I made a video a couple of weeks ago asking you to vote in the comments, like which journal should I flip through next? This one got the most votes. However, um, someone commented, I think it was, uh, was it, was it Tracy Fox or was it Rox? Somebody, somebody who regularly comments had commented saying, um, do this one, but take time and make it a masterpiece. And so I took two weeks instead of just one week. And I don't know if I'd call this a masterpiece, but I would definitely call it one of my favorite little overstuffed journals ever. I hope you love it too. I'll stamp something with my cat butt stamp and put it inside just since that was used as a prop to hold the book up throughout the filming process. But yeah, hope you loved it. I hope you have a wonderful Canada day. If like me, you're in Canada. And if not, just happy crafting and so much love. Until next time, you can find the journal in my Etsy shop. You can also find those Victorian printables I used. And that will be linked, like I said, in the video description. Bye for now.